Okay everyone, so I'm just going to show you about uh, arterial blood gases now and how to take an ABG. Starting firstly with the different types of needles. The types of needles that you will be using on the wards are these needles here, which have, um, where am I sorry, I can't see that, with, actually have a needle on the end of it, so a syringe with a needle. Uh, both of them have this little ball bearing in them and they're both coated with heparin and this is to help the ball bearing is to agitate the blood and the heparin is to stop any clotting as you take it to the arterial blood gas machine. They also come with these little caps on them and these caps are compatible with the blood gas machines in the hospital. So these caps, these are suitable for sampling in our machine. So I'll show you at the end how we take off the needle and how we attach on these little caps. The other syringe I have here are the syringes that we use in intensive care, HDU and down in theatre. They don't have a needle on the end so we can sample um, arterial lines with this. You can also use these to pull a venous blood gas from a cannula. So if you've just placed a cannula and it's bleeding back okay, you can place these into the cannula to draw back a little bit of blood to take a venous blood gas. And it can save you a lot of hassle then trying to uh, find the artery afterwards when you've already accessed a vein. So that's the equipment we need, which is largely going to be the syringe and needle. You also need something to clean the skin to a sani cloth. You also need uh, something to cover the uh, puncture site afterwards, such as a um, plaster or a little bit of a dressing like this with some tape across it, so ready to go. And finally, what I have here is a small little syringe. So you can use either a three or five mil syringe and some lidocaine. It can be one or 2% lidocaine. I happen to have 2% here. The reason being is that I'm going to show you how you can anaesthetize the skin using either a blue or an orange needle, depending on how uh, big or small your patient is. The blue needle is a little bit larger, but if you have someone who is a little bit cachectic um, or very friable skin, then you can use the smaller orange needle. You can anaesthetize the skin in someone where you're not terribly confident of hitting this quite uh, early after feeling their artery and you're not too sure that you know exactly where you're going or that you're going to get straight into it. Accessing an artery can be very sore. On some people, if they're quite thin or quite elderly, you can very, very easily feel their artery and sometimes even see it pulsating in their wrist. But if that's not the case and it's quite a faint pulse, then we will anaesthetize the skin or at least you have that option. So firstly, let's talk about positioning of the patient. So, Noreen is in respiratory failure and we're going to do a blood gas on her. So we are going to use uh, this liter of fluids wrapped up in an Inco sheet and Eva is showing here just how to wrap it up. You can use any liter of fluids or any media pillow or something to use to extend the patient's wrist so that they're extended back in this position. And Eva is just going to tape across Noreen's wrist here to help hold it in place. Now we have a stool here at the side of the bed, this nice big flat stool that you don't necessarily have on the wards. Your options then is to move the patient to their right hand side in the bed so that Noreen could have her left hand on the bed itself if she had a little bit of space. So she's scooting to the side and now we still can achieve the same extension of the wrist while the patient is in the bed. Spend your time on trying to position the patient correctly and palpating the artery. Everything else will be easy after that. Depending on whether you're left or right-handed, you can use either hand to try and feel where the arm radial artery is. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here just so you can see what Eva's doing. So Eva is moving her fingers back and forth a little bit where she thinks the radial artery is going to be. She'll feel a pulsation, but with a patient with a nice fast heart rate or a nice high blood pressure, you can often feel a strong pulsation throughout the entire area. So as she moves her fingers slowly more medial and more lateral, she will feel where the strongest pulsation is. And in some people you can feel that rope or that tube of the uh, actual artery itself. So try and place that strongest area of pulsation directly under the pads of your fingers, so your index finger, where it's most sensitive. And then you're going to use your needle to go directly underneath your index finger towards that real sensitive pad of your finger that's feeling the tube of the artery. Okay, so I'm going to show you now when we give the needle to Eva. Okay just how she positions herself to give herself the best chance of success here. Now she's going to clean the skin. This is essential and keep the skin nice and clean. And just like we said in our cannulation video, make sure that you're not 
touching the skin again and again and again if you are trying to clean the skin again to keep it as sterile as possible. Now, the needle itself, Eva's going to show you how she holds it. She's pulled back the plunger just a little bit because once you access the artery, this is going to automatically fill itself. The bevel of the needle is going to face upwards and we're going to go in at a 45 degree angle. So Eva is right-handed, so you can see she's coming towards Noreen's left hand. She's using her left hand to feel where the artery is and at approximately 45 degree angle, she would enter down into the tissue, into the artery. She's gonna move the needle slowly. Now we're not going to actually access the artery here today just because it's um, not necessary, thankfully for Noreen. So she's going to advance the needle really slowly towards where she thinks it is. Remember that the artery is not very far beneath the skin for most people. You can judge on the body habitus of the patient and how strongly you can feel or maybe even see the pulse. But for most people, it's very close underneath the skin, a few millimeters to half a centimeter or so. If you don't access the artery having gone in a reasonable distance, you can slowly withdraw the needle. And the reason we do it slowly is that you may actually come back into the artery on the way out. If that's not possible and you still haven't accessed the artery, you'll see how Eva is very, very slightly angling the tip of the needle back and forth. You don't need to move a large distance, particularly if you're quite close to the artery, and hopefully you will access the artery. If you have anaesthetized the patient, this shouldn't hurt very much, but we'll show you how to do that in just a moment. If you are hurting the patient, then withdraw the needle and you can always give a little bit of local anaesthetic to help in any further attempts. So once she has accessed the artery, the syringe will fill with blood. You don't need to fill the whole syringe. Half a mil is plenty because our blood gas machines only use um, a few hundred microliters at most to do the entire blood gas analysis. So once she withdraws the needle, she's going to put pressure on the artery using either the plaster or the little bit of dressing like you see here. And she's going to spend a moment pressing down on that artery because we don't want to bruise the patient or cause a hematoma. Remember that your arteries are of course are at higher pressure than your veins so you may need to spend a little bit longer here than you would for a vein. Now looking at our syringe here we're going to need to be safe now. These little syringes have these devices. See this plunger here on the side that advances up over the actual needle and completely sheathes it for you to keep things nice and safe. We'll show you how to add the little cap onto it in just a moment. Now, so the ball bearing you can hear moving up and down in the syringe there, mixing the blood, mixing it with the heparin and keeping it agitated. Always give it a few little turns like that. Now, okay, our patient is nice and uh, comfortable now and happy, but we're going to add the little cap to our syringe now. So you can see Eva has pulled the entire cover off that, that syringe. It all comes off, so that's needle and cover all at once. And then we just add our little cap on to allow it to be used with our blood gas machines. <clears throat> so that's about it. You want to expel all the air from the syringe, make sure there's no air bubbles in it before you add this wee cap on the top here. And you can finish up with the patient and then take it to your blood gas machine as quickly as possible to um, prevent any errors in reading. Finally, we're just going to show you briefly how to anaesthetize the skin. So we're going to drop a little bit of lidocaine and in the same way as we've done already you're going to find where the artery is first of all so spend the same amount of time figuring out where your insertion point for your needle is going to be you don't need much local anesthetic for this but we're going to give it a little bit of time to dissolve into the tissues so eva has no air in her syringe there it's just her local anesthetic and a little orange or a little blue needle Again, you clean the skin before you anaesthetize. You spend the time finding your artery because we don't want to put too much local in here. If you put an excessive amount of local, it can cause a big bleb of fluid in the area and it takes a little bit longer to find the artery. So once she's happy that that's the line her artery is in, you go just under the skin, aspirate first, always aspirate because you're near a lot of blood vessels and inject even just a quarter or half of a mil to start 
the patient will feel this this is quite stingy and sore so tell them that it's going to hurt and then you can infiltrate the area around I would then use a little bit of swab or the little sani cloth that you use to clean the skin to rub the local anesthetic in particularly if you've caused a bleb of local anesthetic and you now can't feel your artery so well so rub 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 helps rub all the local in spreads it around and spreads the area that's anesthetized and then you can carry on with your blood gas as we've just shown you hopefully your patient will feel little or nothing afterwards just release the hands You'll have your dressing on your patient and that's about it. Off to the blood gas machine to analyse your uh, arterial sample.